So, Congressman, before we get into this uh, shutdown and the exit strategy, I do have to ask you about the new speaker of the House of Representatives, Speaker Ted Cruz. Uh, <laughs> it seems he is running the House these days, isn't he? You know, it's amazing. I mean, there's a lot of folks who are listening to him. You know, what Boehner's having right now, he has a war. Not with the Democrats, but he has a war within his own party. Moderates, I've talked to a lot of those moderate Republicans, they're not happy, but there's this small percentage of Tea Party Republicans that really control what's mm -hmm. happening right now. That's the war that he's facing within his own party. Is Ted Cruz, and uh, you know, with his phony filibuster and this, this, this hard line in the Senate where he's alienated a lot of his fellow Senate Republicans, How's he received back in Texas? You know, it, it was interesting. When he uh, first ran, he said he was going to be for, well, he, he put his father in a Spanish commercial to talk about immigration reform. So I looked at that and said, I wonder if he's going to be for immigration reform. And of course, he's not been very supportive. No. So it's very, very interesting. He won because now Texas has shifted over far right in a Republican primary. And that's why a lot of my fellow Republican congressmen are afraid to take certain positions because what could happen to them in mm. the primary? They're, they're going to be primaried. And that uh, element of the Republican Party, I guess, is enthusiastic about what Ted Cruz is doing. Right. right? Yeah. Look, look, so, look, look, look at this. So look at the head of the Republican Congressional Committee, Pete, Pete Sessions. He's got a primary. They call him a rhino, that he's a Republican in name only. Here's the person who ran the Republican Congressional Committee. He's got a primary because I don't feel he's conservative enough. That's what's happening in Texas. But at the same time, you know, the Hispanic population, we're about 38 uh, percent and it's growing and, and we're trying to do everything to turn it blue. Once we take uh, we uh, uh, turn Texas blue, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be so hard for a, a Republican to win the presidency in the United States. Uh, yeah. In fact, maybe I, I've, what I've read is if if uh, we turn Texas blue, it might be impossible for Republicans ever right. to get enough. Now, the New York Times this morning, Congressman, has, uh, and I've been waiting to see this because you keep hearing about the Tea Partiers and the hardliners in the House who are really controlling the agenda. And the New York Times this morning identifies 20 as these are the these are the ringleaders. I'm sure you know them all, mm -hmm. but it includes Louis Gohmert and Steve Texas, King and Michelle Steve. and Michelle Bachman here. Uh, how can it be that these 20 people who want to shut who want to shut down the government how can it be that they are running the show because there are 435 members of Congress but you get 232 Republicans you minus those 20 people you get below 218 they don't have a majority and that is what Boehner's afraid of. If he's going to try to keep the Hastert rule, try to say we're going to do the majority, he's worried about a revolt where he's going to lose the speakership. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Those 20 people, uh, opposed to the moderate Republicans that I've talked to that want to work this out, these are the 20 people. Imagine, I think it was this gentleman right here who said, when Speaker Boehner and a Republican— You're talking about Tim Hulskamp from Kansas. Right. Right. I think it was him who said— he said, Boehner did talk to us about what happened in the 1990s. He talked to us about the dangers. And he said, that was the speaker's opinion. That's the experience he had la in last century. This is a new time. In other words, whatever happened in the 1990s doesn't matter. So this is the new mentality of this uh, Republican Tea Party that they just don't want to compromise. And the way redistricting has been done, Bill, yeah. they right. feel... That confrontation is better than consensus in the way redistricting has made and those they districts. Don't, because they don't have to worry about it. They That's don't. right. No, exactly. So we're at loggerheads right now. Do, do the Republicans have an exit strategy? I mean, yesterday they tried this piecemeal approach, right? Right. Which, no, we voted against it. Because, I mean, why are you going to cherry pick certain agencies? What about the other uh, federal employees? What about the other government services? Sure. And if they can do a clean... CR and an individual, let's do the whole thing. Why are we paying political games? They put it in suspension yesterday because they know that they we're not going to have enough votes because we're going to vote. So they can put a lot of us on the record to show. And I know this. One of, one of my Republicans says, you voted against veterans. You know oh, this. Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's all political games that they're, that they're playing. And is the, do they so? Is that what the is that what you expect them to continue like today when you go back? Is there there's going to be another attempt like that? Yeah, or? I think they're going to go back and put this on regular what we call regular order because they they were doing this on suspension to put it. They know they're going to lose it. Say they voted 
and, and it, because you got to have a certain amount of votes on this. Yeah. You, the other thing you got to look at, uh, and, and this is something, is I think they're going to wait to the debt ceiling in. I thought it was going to be. I, I didn't think government was going to shut down. I said, you know, I'm an optimist. I didn't think it was going to happen. I think now they're going to wait to the debt ceiling, ceiling so they can put that together. So we're talking probably another two weeks of a government shutdown. I think. I mean, I mean, the that's, way they sound, they, they sound pretty confident that they're winning. And that's 800,000 federal employees who won't just miss a day without pay, who will miss two weeks, three weeks without pay. We're losing, I think I've seen different... Uh, I mean, that's a big impact on, on people who are not making that much money in the first place. Listen, you know, the federal employees are being treated like second class by, by some of those Tea Party folks. They got families. They got daycare. Uh, they got uh, home mortgages they got to pay for. Why are we putting them as political pawns? And that's what they're doing. Uh, you know, I don't hear a lot of those Republicans say, you know what, I'm giving my pay uh, up as they as those federal employees do that. Let, let, you know, I don't see any of the Republicans standing up and say, I'm going to give up my pay uh, to the uh, to do that. You know, our senator, you saw what uh, Joaquin Castro did. Uh, they, they asked them, are you going to give up your pay? He said, no, I'm not. They put so much pressure on him that he turned around and said, OK, I'll give up my pay. Mm. But it's amazing. What about those federal employees? We're forgetting about the federal employees. 